Hi everybody, Hanno the Honda Mackinen here and welcome back to the Leaders of Finland series. Now, my last couple of videos on the series that I did last year, I was talking about the different short-term uh, Finnish governments, governments that failed and the worst governments run by every single party. One of the things that I always am a little afraid of is that in the videos it always seems like I'm picking on the center party. After all, I did devote an entire video to our infamous first female prime minister who was a center party prime minister and the thing is the center party is kind of an easy target there are just so many infamous individuals from this party so i knew that if i was going to bring back the leaders of finland series i was going to inevitably have to talk about one of two very big important and infamous center party leaders and while making a video about our only four-term president would have been interesting I decided that it was maybe high time that I took a little bit of stock in one of our most infamous fall from grace stories, which was our last center-led prime minister, the one, the only, Juha Sipila. Now, I've seen enough governments come and go during my lifetime that I've noticed that certain patterns tend to get repeated regardless of who's in power. Usually, whatever party happens to hold the prime ministership, if they don't really fulfill their promises, they usually get replaced by one of the other big traditional parties who then come in and try to work things out with a new combination, possibly with the old guys who used to be in charge. And no matter how popular somebody was at the time when they got elected into their position, their shine usually seems to have worn off a little bit by the time the next election comes around. But even so, the degree at which Sipilek lost his popularity during his time as prime minister is probably one of the most staggering. And Sipila really has to thank his stars that, he, that his follower in the prime ministership ended up lasting only six months, which admittedly takes at least a little bit of the edge off of his failures. So anyway, the Sipila government came into power in 2015, but he was first elected into the Finnish parliament in 2011. Which is to say that he did not have a particularly long political career before becoming prime minister. Now, how does a relative newbie like Sipila become the prime minister of Finland? Well, that's because of the kind of atmosphere that was going on around the time when the election happened. Now, around this time, both the NCP and the Centre Party had really started to push this strong mantra of employment reform in order to increase Finland's employment rate and obviously decrease its unemployment rate. But at the same time, the general feeling around this time was that too many of the same faces in Finnish politics were just taking turns at having a crack at the situation without any noticeable differences in their approaches. So this is where Sipila was very different. Like I said, he was not a career politician. Sipila was actually a very successful businessman before entering politics. As such, he was already a well-known employer of several people, and many supporters of the Centre Party and indeed the NCP felt that Sipila was the right man for the position of trying to reform Finland's employment laws. On this platform, Sipila was elected. Sipila was by far the most popular candidate in the 2015 parliamentary elections, with over 30,000 people voting for him. Thus, he started shaking up the status quo quite considerably. How so? Well, his government would indeed include the Centre Party and the NCP, who kind of shared the same ethos, and also the Finns party. Yes, Finland's notorious anti-immigrant, anti-EU party was one of the three main parties in the Finnish parliament, which to the surprise of no one, the Swedish People's Party noped out of for the first time since 1979. But as controversial as this lineup of the Sipila government was, ironically, his partner parties did not end up doing that much damage to him. Well, not immediately at any rate. And Sipila seemed very gung-ho about his particular plan, so even though there were more than a few people raising their eyebrows at this governmental makeup, most people thought that Sipila was the man who would get the job done. And unfortunately, Sipila would go on to basically fail every single goal during his prime ministership, except for one. Now, I normally like to approach these kinds of videos with threes of subjects, but in Sipila's case, I think the two biggest hits of his prime ministerial career that are now remembered as the things that ended up destroying his popularity with the public really came down to two things. One was the Talgivara mining incident and the aftermath of that. 
And the other one was his unemployment reform, aka the activity model. Besides which, Sipila also had a bunch of other political faux pas that, that just over time managed to completely kill off his popularity. And yes, the Big Finns Party schism also happened during his tenure as Prime Minister. But personally, I think this is an incident that we can't really blame Sipila for, and it's something that I might make a video out of at a later date. But the underlying problem with Sipila as a Prime Minister was the fact that he was indeed a political outsider. Now, I'm pretty cynical when it comes to politics, generally speaking, but I still have to admit that when it comes to being a successful politician, there actually is a little bit of skill involved. You have to know to butter up the right people so that you get to pass the reforms you want. Oftentimes you don't get exactly what you want, but you will get at least the bare minimum of what your goals are. And even if you don't, you usually are at least skilled enough to save face when you fail. This is a talent that Sipila never quite picked up on. And now, now let's start with the activity model reform, which, which I think is the incident that most people often remember Sipila for. Basically what Sipila's big idea was, was to lower the cost of unemployment benefits, and also increase the general employment rate by coming up with some kind of a motivator for unemployed people. One of the Finnish unemployment system's biggest problems is that it doesn't really encourage accepting short-term employment. That is to say that while you are allowed to get some unemployment benefits, even if you are working, the amount of work that you're allowed to do and the amount of pay you're allowed to get is very strictly regulated, and if you go over a certain limit, you will be automatically denied your benefits. This obviously leads to a situation where people will not accept certain short-term employment because there's a real risk that while the pay that they might receive from this job is not enough to live off of, it might be just barely enough that they will end up losing what benefits they're already getting. The Sipila government's solution to this was to put into law a reform which would automatically cut people's unemployment benefits by a certain percentage if they stayed unemployed for longer than three months. Basically, they included a penalty system. So how would you avoid getting this penalty? Well, by either accepting certain very specific training programs that show that you were being active about finding a new job, or basically accepting short-term employment below a certain pay grade for a certain number of hours per week. In other words, by not actually presenting a solution, but rather just adding a penalty to this already kind of broken system. And you know the system was broken because the people charged with paying people's unemployment benefits, the National Pension Organization, even came out and said that this reform was a load of bullshit. Now, I don't think Sipila made this particular reform out of some kind of petty hatred for unemployed people, but it really did not have the results he had hoped for. B directly after applying this particular model, Finnish employment rates only rose moderately and not to any noticeable degree. But what it definitely did was make Sibylla seem very callous and out of touch with the struggles of the average Finnish person. And indeed, the activity model ended up being so unpopular that when the infamously short Antti Rinne government came into power, one of the first things that they did was to completely repeal it. Now the second incident, which Sibila technically didn't have anything to do with, but was definitely something that haunted him until the end of his prime ministership, was the Talvivara mining incident. Talvivara is a mining company that is located in a county that it shares its name with, and they are a copper refinery. The way you refine copper is in refinery heaps, which of course need to be pretty big and therefore located outdoors. Then in 2015, unfortunately, one of these copper refinery heaps leaked into the nearby river and caused a environmental disaster. Now the Talivara company wasn't doing particularly hot even before this incident, so you can probably guess that when they were charged with environmental crimes, they claimed bankruptcy. The Sipila government, however, came to the rescue and decided that they should buy out the company in order to ensure that the Talivara company's debts were paid and also to ensure that the cleanup process would not be hindered by this. As you can probably guess, however, the Finnish public was not entirely happy about the fact that Sipila had decided to buy a company that, that just committed an environmental crime. And eventually, people also discovered that Sipila had at one point owned shares in the Talavivara mining company. Now, although this led to an official investigation, it was eventually found out that Sipila had not committed any kind of conflict of interest by buying out the company. 
but it was something that basically turned into a low-hanging fruit that he was criticized for continuously for the rest of his prime ministership. And even once the worst of the fallout of this particular scandal had come out, Sibylla then decided to give the photobomb to end all photobombs. Now, because the Talivara mining company's name was obviously also kind of soiled in this scandal, after the government buyout, the company changed its name to Terrafame, and at one point, Sipila decided that it was a good idea to give an interview wearing this beanie. Which I think showcases another one of Sipila's main flaws as a politician. Apart from his obvious lack of leadership skills, and was his complete incapability of reading the mood in the room. Which I honestly think is the number one reason why his partner parties ended up not having that many scandals or ones that actually people would have paid any attention to. Sipila just managed to somehow hone in on every single political landmine and step on it throughout the entirety of his prime ministership. And I need to stress that his fall from grace wasn't some sudden drop at some point. It was really a slow, depressing decline all the way throughout. So while these were the two main incidents, they were far from being Sipila's only ones. One of the early reforms that he actually planned was to lower the wages of nurses, which as you can probably guess didn't go over so well. Not long after becoming prime minister, some reporters also dug up an old quote from him, which apparently made him out to not be very respectful of scientists and researchers. But in Sipila's defense, I have to say that this quote was taken grossly out of context. However, the most damning of all the scandals linked to Sipila was definitely him pressuring the Finnish broadcasting company Waya Lee, who had made several unflattering reports about him and his relatives in the past. I think I don't need to tell any of you that a prime minister in power, possibly threatening a news organization, is in any way, shape, or form acceptable. Indeed, the only thing that the Sipila government ever really managed to push through in any kind of successful fashion was apparently some reforms to, uh, to combat illegal business. And as I mentioned before, the Sipila government technically ended its reign prematurely, with Sipila tendering his resignation three months before his term was actually up. And the reason why he decided to tender his resignation at that point was his inability to push through a social services reform. And again, I don't really blame Sipila for this failure, because Sote is something that has been going on in Finland for damn near two decades at this point. But as if Sipila hadn't let down enough people at this point, pushing through the Sote reform had really been one of his big campaign promises, and in the one instance where he probably did manage to read the mood in the room, was probably the reason why he decided to give up on being prime minister. Rinne is actually still to this day a member of parliament, although obviously his star has fallen quite a bit, and Sipila stepping down as the head of the center party ended up being a very smart move, because despite all these failures, the center party still managed to get back into the government now as the support party for the SDP. Until next time, I'm Anudanda Mekinen, see you on the next one.